Hello and welcome back. So, last time we looked at the dialog get data and the, the language controller. So this time we are going to make the dialog controller. All right, let me just quick look at my notes. Yes. Alrighty. So let's see. So we need to actually set up so we can have all all the text like the next text name the text box the buttons so we have a reference a reference for those to actually use them in the code so let's go in and do that all right so we're of course going to just make it as a serialized field and all of it just are just going to be pirates we will have a simple uh, game object that will con that will be the one that uh, contains the entire uh, dialogue system in it, in itself. A lot dialogue UI to be more specific. Next up, just to make it more readable, I'm gonna make a header, and in here I'm gonna call it text, simply because we're going to have our text fields in here. So I'm gonna make it private, and we are of course gonna call it text, and we of course want the using unity engine ui and we are just gonna call it text name for the name i'm gonna duplicate this one here and rename it text box next up we're gonna make the next header um oh, let me just quickly do this so you can see what the header actually does so when we go out here Let's go to our dialog controller when it's done compiling. Come on. There we go. So as you can see now, the header is simply the text over here that says that tells you that this is text, the one below. Well we have an image text name and text box, but at least you know that the header is finding and it makes a small space, so it's more readable. Alright. Let's go back into the code. Oh, we'll move the right one. And the next one we want to make is for the images. So let's just go image. And we, of course, again, just want a serialized field. And gonna make that into an image. And we're gonna call left. Yeah, a left image. And you know what, let's just duplicate that four times, because uh, that is a lot easier. And then we want the game object itself, so we're just gonna go GU behind it, for game object. You know what, let's delete that one, just so we can go right and duplicate. Go behind this one and go GO. Oh, let's move my mouse, here we go. And call this game object as well. Alright, so this one will be containing the image we're going to change. This one is for hiding and not hiding the image. And you might be asking yourself, well, why can't we just use this one to hide it? That is because, if we go out here, it's because we have decided to use a mask. So if we actually go into the left image, you can see uh, this is actually the image. That of course we want to hide this specific one. So that's why we have two different, one for the game of the entire uh, image area uh, game object, and then for one for the image itself. All right, I hope that makes more sense. Let's jump back in the code. Next up, we're gonna have the buttons. In theory, I should use uh a list for this, but I just decided that it would be a little easier now that we know we are going to have um, four buttons no matter what. So in this specific scenario, we are going to hard code the buttons, which in theory you should not do. Just so we know, I, I know it's a big no-no um, to hard code stuff, but we are going to do this anyway this time. So sorry about that. First, we are first going to make the button, and next up, we are going to get the reference for the text inside the button. We also want to be able to change that. 
So we're gonna go button text and zero one. And here we're gonna add a space. And because laziness is the only way, one, two, three, and delete the last one. And we're gonna go two, two, three, three, four, four. Oh, that's five. All right. So we might later on make it into a list, but for now, we're just gonna save it like this. So let's go back into, oh, let me just open the right one. If you're curious about why I have two opens all the time, well, that's because I actually make the entire thing first and then I go in and make it again in the video, just so I don't use too much time fumbling around. So, now you can see we have all this, we simply now have to drag them in. So we need, we need just to take this panel here. So if you can see, if you hide the panel, we hide the entire thing. So we're just going to drag in the panel. Then we need the text uh, name and the text panel, or text box in theory. Uh, then we need the buttons. Uh, let's just do the images first. So right face, the right image, that's this one here. And the game object, the left image goes here and it game objects go here. Just close those. So now we have the buttons. So let's drag in button one, button two, button three, and button four. And let's open them up. Uh, one, actually, let's call them button. Oh, before I do that, uh, let's just reverse and open up the game object and go be button text and go back as you can see that changed all of them so i'm simply just gonna go one two oh, no 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 three and four the reason why I did that is simply because now when I drag them down, I uh, I can be sure that I can visual visually see that they are in the correct spots. That's literally the only reason why I did it, and there's no other reason to do it than just being able to see it. So I hope that makes a little more sense. Let's jump back in the code. So uh, on awake, we of course. Uh, want to make sure that we actually can't not see. Oh, I went completely outside. I should not do that. So we're going to go awake. And on awake, we want to hide the entire thing. But let's make a method for that instead. So let's go private void show. You know what? We actually want to be able to see that from other scripts. So other scripts can actually start let's show the dialogue that might be a good idea so show dialogue oh and that is of course going to take in a boot hole where we literally say show and we simply go on a dialogue ui dot set active and give it the show so if we make a method well, we can literally do that here and go false Meaning that when we start it, it will literally hide this away. Alright, but we also need a function to actually change the name. Uh, change the name and the text inside the boxes. So let's make another one called for it white. And let's just call it set text. Um, this one is going to take in a parameter of string name and a string called text. Let's just go with that. And that is of course going to be, uh, can we just go name? No. Text. No, there, there we go. Dot text. And we're going to set that of course to be equals the name. Oh, what am I doing? Oh, that's the text one. Oh, my bad. Oh, 
this is name. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm confusing myself. That is not right, right? <laughs> uh, no, let's rename this. So it was a little less confusing. All right. So what did I do? We made uh, a method that you can call where you add the name and the text. It will then go in and change the text inside the, the name and the text box to be what we put in. I just confused myself for a second, so sorry about that. All right, next up, we want to be able to, do, 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 let's see, set the buttons. So, pop flag. Uh, no, let's do image first, so image. So if you of course want the image itself, so we're just gonna call sprite underscore image. And that is going to take in a dialog face type, so we know which which way it's facing. And this of course also needs underscore. So um, in the beginning, let's just set both of them to be false. This way we are making sure that we always reset it. Uh, so this is the secure way of doing it, so let's just do that. So we're gonna make a check also to check if, if the image is not null, because if it is null, oh, uh, there we go. If the image is null, we're not going to show any face, uh, not any, any of the images. So then we are going to check if the dial dialog text is equal to dialog type. Uh, let's just go with left. And it, if, it, if it is left, we're of course going to say left image equals image. Oh yeah, we forgot to do that sprite. There we go. And then we just need to go duplicate this one and move it down. And if you're curious on how to move it up and down, you literally hold Alt down and use the arrow keys. And you can then go Control KD and it would line it up for you. So that's something you just learned. And if it's not one of those, of course, it's just going to be the right one. And I'm just going to copy this and go right and go right. Oh, no, that's not right. There we go. So now we have the ability to also change the image. Wonderful. And then let's make the buttons. So let's make a public white. Oh, public white. And this one is going to take in. Oh, let's just name it first. So set uh, buttons. And this one is going to take in a list of strings. And it's just going to be the text inside the boxes. Uh, so for each uh, button that's going to be made, uh, each number of things in the list, of course. We're also going to make a list of actually called Unity Action. Uh, if I could spell that correctly, that would be nice. There we go. And um, add that one in. And literally, let's just call it Unity Actions. And underscore. So let's just first go over what Unity Actions actually are. Uh, Unity Actions are their version of a action, meaning you can uh, you can add this specific mechanic to a button. So I can make a new action and mm, add that to the button. So it knows when I want to do this specific thing, it will then do that when I click the button. Um, so let's just go out and give an example. Compiling, love it. So what we're going to do is literally go inside the button, and you can see here, this is a action unity function, and we just through code is going to actually make uh, one of those here. So we're just going to go through code and make one here because uh, we want each each of the buttons to be, uh, we want the actions to be specific to what the button actually is going to do. So, uh, we, to put it simply, we're just going to do the exact same thing just through code instead. 
I think that's more simple, but more easy to explain. But actually, we need a list of all the buttons. So we're gonna make a list of buttons. And make a new list of buttons. Let me just kick in my notes. And uh, this is just the private. This will not be serialized. We also need a private uh, list of the text fields, uh, the texts. So we're just gonna go uh, button texts equals new text field. And then at the beginning of it, we are simply just going to say button dot add. And then button. And that's why I said that we should probably just make it as a list in the beginning instead of doing this. But mm, let me just follow my notes for now, and then later on we will check if we should add it into a list. Because I'm already feeling like we should add it into a list already. But for now, let's just go with this. So, like this here, wonderful. I'm gonna save. Let me just quickly check my note. So now we have made the lists. We can simply go down into the buttons. And we want all the buttons to be set to um, set to being full. So we're gonna go for each uh, button. And then we're gonna use the lumbar expression to go uh, Button dot game object dot set oh, set active and we're gonna go false and edit. So we are gonna go through each of the button, find its game object and set it to false. Afterward, we are gonna go for each and simply so take the length of mm, let's just take the text. Uh, the text dot count. So we'll go through each of the texts and we will simply go um, button text and put an I in here and go text equals uh, oh, underscore text equals I. So we will go through each of the text buttons and set that to be the same number. So if we set two two of the um, the buttons through, or texts through, it will then make two buttons and put the text in in the right num uh, the right uh, what should we call it? Oh, I forgot the word for that. Damn. Uh, the right sequence. I'm sorry, I just forgot the English word for it. Well, let's just continue. So let's set up the buttons so that works as well. So we of course going to make sure that we can actually see this button. That's a good idea. So we're gonna set it to true again. And then we're gonna reset what the button actually does. So when you click on it by going button dot on click equals new button event on click. Meaning we are resetting uh, all the information the button has inside of it. So it will no longer... Uh, so we are not deleting buttons, we are reusing buttons, which is best performance. Hooray for that. So we actually want now to add the old information from the other buttons. So we're gonna go and add a listener, and we are gonna add the Unity actions of course, the number. So, it now going to add that Unity actions into the listener. Okay, well, if we remove this field here, oh no, this line, then each time the button is called, it will just add a new listener and add a new listener and add a new listener, meaning that when you click that button, it will literally do 40 things in the end. So that is why we are resetting it each time we are reusing it. So uh, each time it's a clean button we are using. So let's just save that. And that is where we're going to end the video for today. So thank you for watching.